time we were all here together in 2019, I was sitting in those chairs just like you, waiting eagerly to hear stories, see beautiful pictures, and be inspired. But today, I'm lucky enough to be on the stage, excited at the opportunity to inspire all of you guys. So, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna lie, this is a better view from up here. You guys are all beautiful. So today I'm gonna be talking about light painting. But I've been doing photography for over 20 years. I've done everything from weddings to portraits, even shooting TV shows and red carpets. But nothing truly made me feel like an artist until I was doing light painting. And I think what it is, is the darkness is like my blank canvas. And my flashlights are like paintbrushes. And I let my imagination run wild. As you can see, I was actually running wild in this picture, up and down, back and forth, all to try to create an interesting foreground. Light painting also keeps me up late at night. And this is actually a self-portrait I did of one of those sleepless nights. So, what I really love about light painting, though, is the thrill of the reveal. It's the challenge of getting it right in camera, which keeps me taking photos over and over and over again. So for the next 20 minutes, I want you to join me on a journey into the darkness, where I will shine some light on how I create some of my favorite light painting photos. And I hope to spark or ignite in you the desire to find your light and your passion. So let's get started. What is light painting? Well, light painting is a photography technique when you use a handheld light source to shine light on your subject or to use the light to draw in a scene while doing a long exposure. I'm sure you guys are curious, what kind of gear do you need for light painting? So let's just get that out of the way. First, you need a camera. You could use a DSLR camera, a mirrorless, even a smartphone if it has the ability to do long exposures. But I use an Olympus OM-1 for all my light painting. And this camera is my secret weapon. It has this feature on it that allows you, it's called Live Composite, it allows you to see your light painting as you're doing it on the back of your LCD screen. Isn't that crazy, guys? You're able to see your exposure as it's happening. Also, I typically use a wide angle lens. And the reason for that is I like to show off my landscape as well as my subject. Oops, tripods also necessary whenever you're doing light painting or night photography because you gotta keep your camera steady. And having a remote trigger is also helpful so you can actually be in place in triggering, uh, starting your flashlights, starting your light painting so you don't actually have to be from behind your camera. So now we're gonna briefly go over lights. So I love the Luxley Fiddle. How many of you guys have ever used one? They're amazing LED, uh, an LED light that actually turns all different colors, basically the full spectrum of the rainbow, and it goes from 0.5 brightness to 100% brightness. And the coolest part is it has an app, and the app is called the Composer. So it's the Composer and the Fiddle. I mean, those people at Luxley are clever. And I love it because you can trigger, or not trigger, but actually you can change your settings remotely. So it's actually really, really cool. I like to use a flash to illuminate my portraits and my, my models. And the Pro Photo C1 Plus is like this little hockey puck that is so cool because not only is it a constant light, but it's also a strobe or a flash. Lastly, whenever you're doing light painting, flashlights are really important. And some girls collect shoes. I like to collect flashlights. And <laughs> I like to use a bunch of them. There's a lot of brands I use, Nikkor, Coast, even one called Olight. You can check out my gear guide on my website if you want to know more about them. But a couple of the features I look for in a good flashlight is for it to be a thousand lumen or more. Because if you're shooting in the city, like we typically do, you need your flashlight to be bright enough to register in your frame. And it needs to compete with the competing city lights. So let's get started. So how do you take a picture of an iconic location that's been shot over a million times? How do you do a unique photo? Well, I believe you take, you, you mess with, the, sorry, you experiment with time and light. And that's what we did here. This is called kinetic light painting. And to do kinetic light painting is when you create movement with your camera or lens. 
So the lights are actually static, but the camera and lens are moving. So let me walk you through this shot. This is a shot with my 16 to 35 millimeter. It's about a five second exposure, and I had it on a tripod. So for the first three seconds, I left it at 16. And then for the last two seconds, I zoomed in. That is the magic of this photo. It's really unique. No one else really has this shot. And I probably did it like 20 times. Sometimes I zoomed in, sometimes I zoomed out. Sometimes I did a fast zoom, sometimes I did a slow one. It's actually really, really fun to experiment with. And one other tip is when you're doing this technique, if you want the, you know, the background or, or a part of the picture to be better seen in your picture, leave it in that position longer. So like I left the Pepsi Cola sign for three seconds. So the longer you leave it on that sort of frame, the longer it'll be burned into your picture. The quicker you zoom, or out, zoom in and out, the more it'll be blurred. This is the same location, just with the 24 to 70. So see how you can create a different photo just by changing your focal length? So this is a typical scene when you go out to shoot the Milky Way. You have amazing Milky Way and dark silhouettes. So what do you do about this? Well, you learn to light it. So I'm gonna teach you guys how to go from taking a photo to making a photo. And this is the power of light painting. You are revealing your subject. You are able to choose what you wanna be seen in your photo. So I wanna go through how you build a photo. But before I get started, I wanna show you the core elements that I use to create the framework for how I do my light painting. I call this the ABCDs of light painting. A is for ambient light or available light. And this is controlled by your shutter speed. B is for your brightness of your flash or your light source. And it is controlled by your aperture. So let me give you a little scenario. Let's say you're going to be doing um, a photo and you're using a flashlight, let's say in one of these tubes, and it's too dim. So how do you control that? Well, if you want your flashlight to be brighter, you put it at its brightest setting, but that's still too dim you adjust your aperture. But let's say you want the whole picture to be brighter, you adjust your ISO. So ISO will affect both your aperture and your shutter speed and your ambient and also your flashlight source. So we're moving on to the C and the D of the ABCDs of light painting. C is for color. So we know the opposite of darkness is brightness. So in color, the opposite of warm is cool. So let's look at this picture we have here. We have a nice blue background, which looks super contrasty and crazy on these monitors. I'm sorry about that, guys. But it's a little bit more mellow in real life. But the blueness of the blue hour, the way to make this cool old abandoned car look cool was we warmed it up. See how it just pops off the page? So whenever I'm doing my photos, I use cool colors and blue colors. They're like complementary. So um, I use them in all my pictures. You'll notice as we go forward, as a light painter, you get to choose those colors. You're like an artist with a real palette. D is for the direction of light. And you could tell also I shot from about a 45 degree angle. And what I'm using here is the Luxley Fiddle. I'm basically at a, I never want to shoot with my light source from behind the camera because you get flat light. Here, we're off to the side and we got nice dimension. And you notice I also typically like to shoot into the shadow. If you look at the bottom, I actually put a little color wheel there so you can understand complementary colors. We have yellow across from blue. We have red across from green. So when you're creating your pictures, think about that color wheel because those colors that are opposite from each other are complementary and they become really vibrant. So now that we know the ABCDs of light painting, I want to go through and show you how to build a photo. And the first thing we do is we scout a location during the day. And this is really important because we have to make sure we're safe. And what are we safe from, guys? We're safe from, well, what am I looking for? I'm making sure there's no killers, no zombies, no werewolves, no aliens, and mostly no ghosts. I definitely don't want to see ghosts. Because I feel like ghosts would like light painting, and they would, they would probably follow me home, and my apartment is too small for ghosts. So I make sure there's none of that. But what I'm really looking for is holes and stones. I want to make sure I'm not going to trip on any rocks. I'm not going to fall in any holes. Because think about it, guys. We're going to be walking around in the dark. And it's kind of dangerous. So I scout during the day. And this is a place I've actually come to quite often. Um, and I've always been there during the day. And I said, why haven't I gone at night? So what I, what I liked about this location was these white trees. But now that we're here in the dark, you can't see them. So what are we going to do? 
we're going to illuminate them. And that is what we did. I used this great flashlight. It's called the Coast HP7R. And I actually have it here to show you guys. It has this great focusing ring that allows you like to focus and unfocus the beam. So I could shoot the flashlight all the way across the reservoir, which was like awesome, and illuminate the trees. And I thought, OK, that's pretty cool. Now you can see the trees, but it's still missing something. So I turned on my favorite app called PhotoPills. And I looked to see how the star trails were. And I saw that they were going to be awesome. So what I love about this picture is that the stars and the trees, well, the trees are reaching for the stars. And I was able to make this picture come to life. And this wouldn't have been possible if I hadn't light painted those trees. It just would have been a dark, silhouetted scene. Another thing I want to tell you about this picture is I recently took it. This is from my hometown, about 45 minutes away from here in uh, Rockland County. And I have a confession. I have never taken a star trail picture there. And I'm kind of embarrassed, because I take star trail pictures everywhere around the world. And I'm kind of, I guess I've kind of been spoiled, because there's lots of stars out west. And here, I feel like we don't have as many. But this was kind of an eye-opening experience that I want to challenge all of you guys to see that we can do stars here. And we can get great star trails. Maybe not like Death Valley. But definitely, we can do it. So I've challenged myself this summer to go around the Hudson Valley and discover some new star trail and new star locations. You guys are welcome to join me. So I'm going to go and take this barn from the extraordinary. Oh, so I'm going to make this silly barn, an ordinary barn, into an extraordinary barn. And this is my first shot for the available light, the ambient light. And then we went to this. We added colors. We wanted it to look vibrant. And I'm going to talk you through the ABCs of this picture. So A was for the ambient. B is for the brightness. And what we did here was a different technique. It's called low-level light painting. It's different than light painting because we use stationary lights. We put them inside the barn and also to the side of the barn. And they were on for the duration of the exposure. Also, the light was set at a very low exposure, like 2% brightness. So the reason for this was we could run around and do some other cool light painting. The colors were set, and then we can move on to do other things. C is for colors. I chose the red and the blue because of warm and cold. And D is for direction. I want you to really look at the angles of lights I chose here. And you can see I put a little Luxley fiddle in the corner. You're going to notice that in all my frames, I've added the light tool I used. Because I may not mention it, but I want you guys to see what I'm using. So I put it right in that far corner because I wanted the light to scrape across the barn. I wanted to have those highlights and those shadows. And for the one inside, I just basically pointed it up at the roof. So then Cheech and Chong showed up. And uh, we might have busted out a smoke machine. And I thought, this is pretty cool. I wanted to add some atmosphere. But uh, I felt like it was missing something. I thought it would look great if there was an alien in the doorway. But unfortunately, I'd already scouted for them, and there were none. So we were left with something actually better. We were left with a cowboy. And I thought this finally told a story. You know, like, now we have a cool barn with cool lights, but now we have a narrative. And adding the human element into the story, you know, now you can visualize something. Now you can think, like, what's going on? Is that the Marlboro Man? Like, what's going on here? So you'll notice in a lot of my light paintings, I add the human form. So now we're going to move into light drawing. And this is my favorite. And I want to show you guys that you guys can all start light drawing today with tools that you already have. So by taking a piece of parchment paper, rolling it into a little, uh, rolling it together, and sticking a flashlight in it, you have an instant light painting wand. If you take a soda bottle, put a flashlight in it, you have another tool. Sparklers, holiday lights, glow sticks. These are all tools you have at home that you can actually start doing light drawing with. And all you really do for light drawing is you set your camera up on a tripod and you dance in front of your lens. One other element I wanted to show you that's in this frame is called a T8 tube. And this is a light guard. It's actually this plastic tube actually I brought to show you guys here. This is all it is. It's about $4. You can buy it at the hardware store. But it is like magic. You can do so many things with it. I want to pay homage to Eric Perret. He's actually the founder and originator of this concept of light painting with this tube. And all you do is stick a flashlight in it. And let me show you guys, you have an instant lightsaber. It's the cheapest lightsaber you'll find. $4, guys. 
So um, find it at Amazon, find it at the hardware store, or find it on my website under my gear guide. But Eric Perret originated this idea, and he was a true inspiration for what I do, for my passion, light painting. And I love his work, and uh, he actually creates his own tubes. This is actually one of them. See how beautiful it is? He has like all these great gels, and um, it's just awesome. So if you're interested in buying some higher end tubes, check us out at the Tube Tribe store. So continuing on. Oop, went the wrong way. So one other company I want you to check out if you're looking to invest some money in some cool tools that are going to get your juices flowing is lightpaintingbrushes.com. They have everything from a collapsible sword, um, this fiber optic brush I'm going to show you later that I do the fire with, and a whole bunch of tools all in their beginner's kit. And it's really cheap, so I just recommend checking them out. They're a really cool product. All right, guys, so I've always dreamed of dancing on water. And my friend Ken had a kayak. So I said, let's try and light paint on that kayak. And at first I learned really quickly that it's hard to light paint on a kayak. I actually had to stand up because the light tube I was using was gonna go in the water if I didn't. So I was standing, Ken was paddling, and we created this picture. This is a really cool uh, scene, and what made it cool was I used a different type of T8 tube. Nan light wanted to get in on the light painting action, and they created their own T8 tube that is made with LED lights. So you can prom it, program it to do a rainbow. So I'm spinning the tube kind of like this, over and over again. Ken's paddling, and uh, the rainbows in the tube are just changing because it's an LED light. So really fun stuff. I want to build another photo for you guys. So this is Nelson Ghost Town. It's in Las Vegas, and it's a place where I do a lot of light painting workshops. The left picture is exposing for starlight and the ambient light. The next one, we did low level lighting, where we put one of our Luxley fiddles inside this church, and we decided it would make it red. We thought, that's pretty cool, but it needs something. What it needed was a rainbow. <laughs> what it needed was a couple. You can't have a church without a couple. And how I created this one was, again, I took one of these tubes, and I did a circle around them. And because you're going to see me doing a lot of circles in my pictures, I want to demo to you guys how I do a circle. So you guys can buy your own tube and do a circle right away. So the way I do it, this is a technique I learned from Eric. You turn your body sideways behind your subject. Your subject would be right in front of me like this podium. And you stick your arm out. You're going to keep your thumb down. You're going to hold your light. And you're going to start behind their leg. And you're going to spin it. And the big trick is, is to keep your arm straight and not to make your circle wobble. So think about the center spoke of a wheel. If you wobble your arm, it's gonna look bad. It'll look like an oblong circle. So keep your arm centered, and then once you get to this point, you're gonna let go of the tube because it feels like your wrist might break, it doesn't spin that far, and you just let the tube flow, and then you completed your circle. So I thought that was you know, a nice improvement, but we wanted to go further. So we moved our couple outside of the church, we turned the church blue, and we used a red tube. And then we did something else. We used this flash. Are you guys familiar with like a speed light? I think I didn't bring one now that I look at my stuff. Sorry about that. But it's just a regular speed, out, speed light, like a Godox or a Canon. And we put it on manual mode. And all I did was I powered it down to the lowest setting. And there's a little button on the back of the speed light that says test. It's red. And I just flashed it towards the camera to create that look of like fairy lights or like lightning bugs. And it just was like, became more magical. This is one of my pictures from my luminescent portrait series. And what I really love about it is I was trying to capture the energy of the Day of the Dead. This is on a workshop I did in Mexico. And um, you'll notice I actually went in front of my model this time. I didn't do all the light painting behind her. I wanted it to look like she was a ghost floating. So I basically brought the tube, same kind of tube, right in front of her and made it look like it was even an extension of her dress. And I did the circle behind her as well. One other thing I did was I flashed her. In all the other pictures I've showed you, I've been showing you silhouettes. And again, I use that speed light, and I hand hold the speed light. I don't use light stands because they get in the way. So I went about 45 degree at an angle, and I shot her, because you want to get that nice shadow. See that nice highlight and shadow on her face? One other thing I want to point out is, you're probably wondering, how come you don't see me? And it's because I'm fast like a ninja. But, but also, 
I'm moving around the whole time. I'm not staying in one place. I'm typically wearing black so you can't see me, and I'm not shining any light on myself. So we finally got to the fire, and I'm sure you guys are curious, how does Susan create that fire? Well, I have this really nifty tool here. This is called a black fiber optic brush with a red gel. And when you stick your flashlight in it, the tips turn red. See that? So only the tips turn red, and when you shake it like this, you create that fire effect. It's kind of like you're shaking like a Polaroid picture. Kind of like got that vibe, but you kind of do this. And a couple things I want to point out is you don't do it in the same location or else it'll blow out. See how that one spot was becoming brighter than all the rest? You always have to keep moving or else it will overexpose. And that's true with any type of light, light, uh, light painting. You want to keep moving or else you'll do, do a double exposure and it'll be overexposed. So what I did here was I started the fire from her feet and I shook it all around her feet, I worked my way up her body, and then I extended it through her hands. Because this is my friend Kat, and she really is a superhero. I'm actually creating a whole bunch of pictures that are a part of a superhero collection. So if any superheroes in here want their portrait done, let me know, I'd love to take your picture. I'm looking for models. You guys look like a bunch of models out there. Um, and another thing I want to point out about this picture is at the end, I strobed her, I flashed her to get some light on her face, and one other thing, if you notice behind her, she's glowing. The reason for that is that there was a street light at the end of the alley. And it was illuminating um, the alleyway. And I made sure not to face her into that light because it's a constant light. Like moonlight is a constant light, street lights are a constant light, building lights are a constant light. If you face your model whenever you're doing light painting portraits into that light, there's a chance that their face will start to be exposed and then they'll look blurry. So I always like to face my models into the darkness. This is a photo I created again with this orange light tube from Eric Perret. And I did a technique I like to call the windshield wiper. So let me show you guys that. I expect you guys to all get tubes and start light painting. So you know how a windshield wiper does this? Well, I did it from the side. So basically, this is a, a Friday night for me. Me and my girlfriend went to a, a cool um, botanical garden. It had a nice little reflection pool. And this is what we do. This is fun for us. So I started on one side, and I kind of walked around just doing this windshield wiper technique. And I went all the way around. I went to my friend who was striking like a Saturday Night Live fever pose. And then I started walking back. And you could see that this created symmetry. I think that's really important. Pictures with symmetry are more powerful. Also, the reflections are powerful. And um, I, I really like the colors. You know, we got the warm colors and the blue colors. And another important thing is it has dimension. I want you guys to think about how you can create dimension just by moving forward and backwards in your frame. And you can showcase that with light painting. This is for you guys who don't have a model and also are not in a beautiful location. You can create really cool photos anywhere. So this is to show you that you can create something from nothing. And this is a loading dock outside my apartment building. And it's not pretty. And what I did was I underexposed. So I took a picture of the ambient, and I wanted to get rid of any distractions. And I recommend doing this. Let's say you're going to shoot in your backyard and your neighbor's house is distracting. Underexpose it so you don't see those lights. And then add your light source a little bit brighter. So then all you're getting is this beautiful light source. And all I used for this was a light blade, um, which is kind of a plexiglass blade. You can make them yourselves, um, and a flashlight inside. And I just flowed. I just danced around um, my neighborhood, kind of doing this kind of cool dance. And I learned that the crazier look, when I look crazier, my pictures come out better. So this is the technique I like to show you guys at my workshops. Look crazy, better pictures. Um, but just to show you, you can make something out of nothing with light painting. This is an example of what I like to call light graffiti. And the way I did this one is I used a flashlight and I put it right up against the surface. So here's, you know, iconic Radio City. It was a rainy afternoon, or rainy evening actually, and me and my friend Michaela and Cliff were out light painting. And I thought, okay, let's utilize this dark corner. And what I did was I went right up to the pavement, kind of like this. See how this is kind of big? Too wide. I went right up to it and started light painting just like this, right up against, like, like it was chalk, like it was scraping against the pavement. 
and I wrote, I heart New York, and I turned it off in between each letter. Michaela, she did a zigzag. Cliff did a zigzag, and we created this picture. During this time, someone saw us. They thought we were looking for something. Hey, did you lose your contacts? And we're like, no, we're just light painting. And they're like, what? And we're like, yeah. We're crazy. Again, the crazier you look, the better your pictures come out. I don't know, it's strange. So a pro tip here is when you're shooting in Manhattan, underexpose your pictures a little bit when you do the ambient, because again, you don't want your flashlights and your light tools to be competing with the city lights. So if you dim down your ambient, your lights will show off more. And that's why you need bright light tools in the city. This is a photo I took at a festival that I was hired for called Illumination New York City. And when someone shows up with a hat like this, you have to take their picture. So this is Dada, his name was Dada, even a cool name, a cool hat and a cool name. And he's like, I'm gonna do this tree pose. And I was like, no, that's not how it works. You're not supposed to do tree poses. This is a 20 second exposure. I can barely get people to stand on two feet and do a standstill for 20 seconds. I don't think you can do it. He's like, I got this. So Dada ends up doing his tree pose and we use this strobe technique. So let me show you what strobe mode looks like. So strobe mode looks like this. No one have a seizure. A seizure. So this is strobe mode. And I just did this circle around him like I typically do. And then Michaela used this light whip that I have. It's a cool fiber optic light whip. And she's dancing around. I mean, it's distracting. And we look crazy. But Dada, he held his pose. He did it. And um, at the end of it, I couldn't believe it. I flashed him. I froze him. Everything looked great. And I just have to say, I think it's because of that magical hat. I think it was the hat that did it. He was just too cool. So that kind of sums up my presentation on light painting. I hope I've inspired you to find your light and pursue your passion. So next year, you guys will be up here inspiring all of us. And I hope that you, if you guys are interested in learning more about light painting, check out my QR code here. I have a free light painting guide that this links to. And better yet, join me on a photo adventure where we go off into the journey, into the darkness, have lots of fun, and I do them all over the world. So I hope I'll find you guys lighting the night sometime. Thank you for your time. And, and come find me at the Luxley booth. I'll be doing some light painting there. Thank you.